it's over. It's finally over. No more leaks, no more gossips, no more badly photoshopped iPhone images. The event is done. Now we have four new iPhones. In the beginning of the event, they introduced this HomePod mini, which is a lot cheaper compared to the regular HomePod. And it has almost exactly the same features. I feel they have exactly the same features. And also on top of that, now we're gonna have intercom feature, which I'm guessing is pretty much like the broadcast feature we have on Google Home. It, it is a lot fun to use it in the house. I'm very excited about that. And that and that transition of the camera going behind the HomePod mini and then just turning into the stage was really amazing. The keynote looked fantastic. It was really exciting to watch. But now let's talk about the elephant in the room. The elephant that is sitting in the corner. He has his phone box in his hand. He opens it up and then there's, there are no headphones and then there's no charging brick. This year I bought Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G for $1,300. I paid $200 more compared to Note 10 Plus. There were no headphones. The pre-applied film wasn't there. And then it didn't have extra S Pen tips. When I contacted Samsung via chat, they told me I can call the customer service and they'd be more than happy to send me headphones. And I asked them what would have happened if I didn't know there was supposed to be headphones in there and I, d I didn't get a satisfactory answer. Now, Apple didn't raise the prices of iPhones by $200 just because all of them have 5G in them, but they removed the headphone and the charging brick out of the boxes. That made the boxes smaller, the shipping is easier. They say it's better for the environment. I'm sure it's better for the environment. I rarely use the charger or the ear pod that comes out of my iPhone. So it's really good for us, really good for taking care of the waste. But they didn't remove the headphone and charger brick from iPhone 12 series. They removed it from all of their iPhones. And now if you go and buy, let's say an iPhone 11, you're gonna get it with the iPhone 11 and USB-C to lightning cable. I don't know how many USB-C chargers you have in the house. I mean, USB-A, they're everywhere. USB-C, they're not everywhere. I mean, yes, it's not the end of the world. While you're buying it, you just add it to your cart. It is $19 for the 20 watt charger, $19 for the AirPods, and then you're good. So you get your headphones and then your charger and I don't need them, I don't get them. I think it's the perfect solution instead of raising the prices by $200. Also, if you're laughing at this now, a couple of months later, all of the other phone manufacturers are gonna do the same. Now, they announced four new iPhones, iPhone 12 mini, iPhone 12, iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max. They all have 5G, they have 5G mm wave in US and sub six in other countries. The design is back to what iPhone 5 and iPhone 5S looked like. So I'm really happy about that. No more rounded edges. It also has this new glass, they call it ceramic shield and it's four times stronger than the regular glass. But I'm sure the cavemen of YouTube, once they get their hand on it, they're gonna test it very scientifically. Very scientifically, yeah, don't worry about it. All of the iPhones have A14, the five nanometer chip in it. And I'm expecting that to be blazingly fast. I cannot wait to taste that out. All of the iPhones now have OLED screen. So if you were complaining about the screen on iPhone 11, now it is gone. Now we have OLED screen. iPhone 12 mini has the smallest screen with the highest PPI. And then iPhone 12 Pro Max has the biggest screen with the lowest PPI and iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro have the same resolution. Sadly, no 120 Hertz. I was expecting at least variable refresh rate up to 90 Hertz, but no. The notch is still the same and there, I expected a little improvements 
a faster face ID because the, the reason notch exists on the iPhone and the reason why we don't complain is because it's very useful. But I thought there would have been some improvements, but no improvements on the notch, including its size. They added this new feature called MagSafe. You can slap on a wireless charger on your phone and it would go directly into the place it's supposed to be. It will charge your phone more effectively. It's gonna be really nice. With Xperia 1 Mark II, that phone is so slippery. Whenever I put it on a wireless charger, it will always just slide off. And I kept charging that with a cable. So with iPhone, that kind of a problem will never happen. Those magnets mean there can be different kind of cases. There can be a new wallet, which they showed in the keynote. MagSafe supports 15 watt wireless charging and Qi supports 7.5 watt charging. When it comes to battery life, iPhone 12 mini gives you 15, iPhone 12 and 12 Max gives you 17 and iPhone 12 Max Pro gives you 20 hour battery life while you're watching video. 12 Pro Max's battery life seems to be same as 11 Pro Max, but iPhone 11 Pro had one more hour battery life compared to iPhone 12 Pro. I mean, it has one hour less battery life compared to iPhone SE 2. When it comes to cameras, iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 mini have two cameras and the ultra wide angle lens camera on those phones are same as the ones on iPhone 11 series. But the wide angle on iPhone 12 mini and iPhone 12 has f1.6 aperture instead of f1.8, which should give you better photos in low light. And on the pros, iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max has the new 12 millimeter ultra wide angle lens instead of 13. Wide lens is the same as the 12 family. And on iPhone 12 Pro, the telephoto lens is same as the iPhone 11 Pro family. When it comes to iPhone 12 Pro Max's camera, ultra wide is same as iPhone 12 Pro, but the wide angle has bigger sensor and the bigger pixel size, and that should perform even greater in low light. And when it comes to telelens, the telelens on iPhone 12 Pro Max is 65 millimeter. Since that is narrower, I think when it comes to uh, portrait photos, it's gonna look better. The person is gonna look less potato-ish. Also, the Pro models have the LiDAR sensor, the LiDAR sensor that we have on our iPad Pros. That's gonna help a lot with the AR. It also helps with the focus. All of the lenses on iPhone 12 support Deep Fusion, which is really exciting because Deep Fusion is a great way to take photos. We are also getting Apple Pro RAW. And what that means is the computational photography is still going to happen. Settings are gonna be there and then we will be able to play with those photos before they become JPEG and lose all that information. The most exciting thing about these phones is the HDR video recording capabilities. All of these phones can record 10-bit HDR with Dolby Vision and you can edit that in your phone and then you can post it from your phone because it's gonna have 5G connection. That's going to be fantastic. So now the ball is on your court, YouTube. You gotta do something about your horrible HDR handling. Needless to say, the Pro Series are made from stainless steel and the other is made from aluminum. Now all of these are fantastic improvements and as a person who uses their phone's cameras a lot. I cannot wait to see what iPhone 12 series is gonna bring to the table. But of course there are some things that I wanted and we didn't get it. For example, I wanted that fingerprint scanner that we keep hearing that is on the iPad on the iPhones. I also really wanted to see a 4K 120 frames per second video recording. And I really wanted AirTags to be released. I really want to be able to use this U1 chip on my devices now. Other than that, everything was great. But what matters is what you think. What did you think about the keynote? Did you watch it? Did you like the new iPhones? I'm working on a couple of other videos. I'll be seeing you really soon. Until I see you then, take really good care of yourselves. And hoş çakalın.